We're back again with some exciting news. It turns out Fire Mage has a new contender for best range DPS in the game, and it is quite shocking to think that might actually be as good as Fire. Whoa! Oh, it looks like we're having some audio issues, but I'm sure we'll figure that out. Anyway, if you want to hear more about the range DPS that is on everyone's radar, then make sure to watch until the end. We're going to give you a full breakdown on the meta and let you know how our preseason predictions panned out, so stay tuned to get an important meta update for ranged DPS in Shadowlands Season 3. But before we get into it, we wanted to remind you about Skillcap's rating gain guarantee. Yes, that's right, we are so confident you will gain up to 400 rating while actively using our website that we give you a full refund if that doesn't happen. For $4.99 a month, you get instant access to over 600 premium quality videos, as well as an invite to the exclusive section of our Discord where you can get the help you need with all of your PvP questions. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Visit skillcap.com slash WoW today. Today. So let's kick things off on the Fire Mage tier once again by first talking about Fire Mages. So it turns out the best spec in Season 1 and 2 continues to be great in Season 3. If we're being perfectly honest, Fire Mage still feels like the most complete caster DPS. It has everything you need for the Shadowlands meta with some of the most consistent burst damage combined with cooldown reduction and an insane defensive toolkit. There was a recent hotfix nerfing Blazing Barrier, but that hardly matters as increased conduit levels give Fire Mages an 11 second shield on their Blink Barrier thanks to the Blazing Soul talent. Because of the shift over to Blazing Soul, Fire Mages still remain one of the tankiest DPS in the game and are incredibly difficult to kill for the vast majority of comps. And this still comes with one of the best offensive cooldowns, with Combustion remaining unnerfed in 9.2, slotting Fire Mages comfortably into a wide range of comps, including RMP, which has continued to dominate Season 3 and has even evolved to include Outlaw Rogues as part of its lineup. But now, for the first time in at least a few months, we have another ranged DPS joining fire on the S tier. It's obviously Destro Warlock. But what makes Destro Warlock so good, and how can it possibly compete with our Fire Mage Overlords? So, for one, you should know by now that Chaos Bolt damage is pretty nutty during cooldowns. There are a few reasons for this, but the most important is their tier set bonus called Ritual of Ruin. This allows them to combo a Chaos Bolt cast with another instant cast Chaos Bolt, whose damage will be amplified thanks to their Madness Legendary. This interaction is key to understanding why they are so dominant this patch, because their damage is seemingly twice as threatening thanks to tier sets. That wasn't the only thing that helped them on their rise to the S tier this patch. Another low-key change was to the Trinket Set bonus, which grants additional stamina in 9.2 and beyond. This helps buff one of their primary PvP talents with Demon Armor, together giving them even more HP multipliers, which in turn makes Dark Pact even stronger, since it scales based on current health. The icing on the cake, though, was the rise in popularity of Frost Mages, giving Destro Warlocks a Tier 1 comp thanks to the strength of MLP. Both Mage and Warlock in this comp are able to do seemingly never-ending damage, thanks in part to the fact that both are able to benefit from the Echoing Resolve Trinket, which makes dealing damage much easier when there are multiple micro CCs and interrupts that would otherwise stand in their way. Mage Lock is quickly becoming one of the most dominant comps on the ladder, but even outside of MLP, Destro Warlocks have multiple comp options, which makes them a really solid pick for Season 3. With the God Deer out of the way, we have some honorable mentions, with one you were probably expecting. Beast Mastery Hunters continues to be a solid pick halfway through 9.2, and there are a few reasons why. The biggest reason is simply having access to one of the best 3v3 comps in the game, with Jungle Cleave continuing to be an execution test for any comp, even RMP. Across the entire ladder, this setup still represents a pseudo DPS check for any combination of players, as its combined damage output makes the game into a race that the jungle is designed to win. And with the introduction of double legendaries, BM Hunter damage has gotten even more threatening. With the ability to equip one of the best offensive and defensive legendaries at the same time, Hunters continue to have an incredibly well-rounded toolkit. But joining BM Hunters on the A tier will be Frost Mages. In our preseason prediction, we thought Frost might continue to struggle in a meta where micro CCs and interrupts are everywhere. But that doesn't seem to be the case thanks to Echoing Resolve. This trinket alone has helped activate both Frost and Destro, giving both specs the ability to freely cast in a meadow where that would otherwise be impossible. And it's precisely this ability to free cast that makes Frost Mages the most threatening, and that's thanks to a few key modifiers. For one, Icy Veins is at the core of their offensive toolkit, and is no longer dispellable thanks to an earlier patch. This cooldown is often paired with the Necrolord exclusive Deathborn ability, giving them nearly a minute of offensive power, which gets even stronger thanks to the Slick Ice Legendary. 
All of these damage modifiers combined make Frost Mages incredibly threatening when combined with Destro Warlocks, as their damage seems to never stop. So in case you weren't introduced to the gauntlet of Mage Lock on the ladder, you might find yourself surrounded by this PvE simulation sometime soon. But now it's time to drop a half tier lower, where we cover some specs that are definitely strong but might find it awkward to fit into the Season 3 meta. The first is Marksmanship Hunter. This honestly was the most difficult spec to place in this tier list, and our pro players had a few differing opinions about this seemingly gimmicky build. The reason we say gimmicky is because Marks Hunters do one thing really well, and that is blasting targets with massive aim shots during short cooldown windows. While this damage is super scary, it can be avoided through disarms or simply with line of sight. For these reasons alone, it can be a bit more tricky to play in Jungle Cleave, but it is still really strong and has huge potential. And speaking of huge potential, Affliction Warlock stumped us a few times in the past, but this season could be slightly better overall. Once again, the changes to Trinket set bonuses has given them slightly more bulk thanks to stamina multipliers affecting Dark Pact absorption. On paper, Affliction should be able to do the highest DPS of any spec in Arena, especially considering Double Legendaries has given a significant damage boost thanks to the Soul Satchel effect. The one thing that continues to hold Affliction back is just the relative strength of Holy Priests. Of course, any god tier healer will be difficult for a mid tier DPS, but Holy has a toolkit that is designed to counter dot damage thanks to the Fade MD combo and Prayer of Mending. Despite this, Affliction is fully capable of fitting into multiple comps just as a noticeably weaker version of its sister spec. Lock Shaman and Shadow Play continue to be staple setups for Affliction, so expect a few encounters with those ancient archetypes this season. And speaking of Lock Shaman, Elemental is joining Affliction on the B-plus tier. In our pre-patch predictions, we had pretty high hopes for Ellie this season, due in part to its strong tier set bonuses, which synergize well with the Skybreaker Legendary. Again though, with a nerf to Fleshcraft, Elemental lost a bit of bulkiness in the patch, which hurt the most into RMP, which continues to be a difficult matchup for the spec. Some shamans have shifted away from the Necrolord Covenant in favor of Kyrian and its super threatening Vesper Totem, and this might actually be a decent option at lower ratings, where players are less likely to kill the totem before it deals too much damage. In any case, shamans continue to be a bit of a mixed bag and are pretty sensitive to any balance change since they have been on the cusp of the high tiers for quite some time. And speaking of being sensitive to change, Balance Druid rounds out our B-plus tier. Once again, Boomkins continue to fill the mid-tier caster role in Season 3 despite being hit by some key nerfs in 9.2. With Frenzied and the Kindred Affinity Legendary both being nerfed in the patch, Boomkins saw a noticeable drop in representation after being one of the most popular specs towards the end of Season 2. Even though its tier set bonuses are pretty good, Balance still seems to be struggling to break into the high tiers. With the rise of Destro Warlocks and Frost Mages, there are simply better options for other meta classes when building a comp, and the niche role Boomkin fills is currently overshadowed by these high tier DPS. And just to clarify, we're not saying Boomkin is bad at all, it is still capable of climbing all the way to rank 1, but might struggle into some of the meta gatekeepers at higher ratings. And now with our honorable mentions out of the way, it's time to dip to true mid-tier territory. Shadow Priests surprisingly take up our first slot for mid-tier range DPS, despite being really well situated for the majority of Shadowlands. So what happened? For one, there were some key nerfs to Necrolord specifically, which was the Covenant of Choice at the end of Season 2. These came with a nerf to Mana Regeneration, which previously allowed Shadow Priests to exploit their ability to spam Offensive Dispel. Together, these changes would set Shadow back dramatically, especially with a nerf to Arms Warriors who offered a solid tier 1 comp in the form of WPS. At the beginning of Season 3, Shadow Priests realigned themselves with the Night Fae Covenant and became a pure utility bot for their team through the cooldown reduction of Fae Guardians. This usually meant pairing them with an Assassination Rogue, since Vendetta could be dramatically reduced with this single ability. Now that Assassination has been slightly nerfed, the relative strength of Shadow has decreased indirectly for a second time, and we can't really predict if and when they will emerge as a dominant force in the meta for the remainder of this season. Shadow Priests aren't alone on this tier, as Demo Warlocks will also also be joining them in the mid tier for the remainder of season 3. Once again, we overshot our preseason prediction, but that was mainly due to some key nerfs after ranked competition officially started. Demo was looking really promising in the preseason thanks to damage modifiers on Demon Bolt, but this abruptly changed as the spell got two separate nerfs in Hotfix nearly a month into the patch. These changes would set Demo behind, as Destro would wind up becoming the dominant Warlock spec in the meta. With that said, Demo is still a viable spec for competition. Once again, it suffers a similar problem to other mid-tier casters, that there are simply better options to fill out comps, but it still has a unique role in Season 3 and can still be played at high ratings. 
And that unfortunately brings us to the last range DPS in our roundup, which requires us to deep dive into the trash tier. Unfortunately, this spot belongs to Arcane Mage. Look, we're not hating on the spec at all. And just as an aside, you will catch us playing Arcane once Wrath Classic comes out. But back to reality, Arcane is simply a bad spec overall. It continues to be limited by one spell school, which severely impacts its ability to deal with all the micro CCs and interrupts that are abundant in Shadowlands. Without any significant balance changes, Arcane is just simply outdated at this point. And really, its only niche is Kleptomania, which is pretty much useless into anything that isn't Arresto Druid or Fire Mage. So what is the role of Arcane in Season 3? We don't know. In case you want to play Arcane in PvP, we hear that there is a bowling mini game, so break out your Wii nunchucks and get ready to press Arcanosphere. So just to recap, here we have a complete picture of the Season 3 range DPS meta. Destro Warlocks are definitely the storyline you should be monitoring for the rest of the season, as they could be on the radar for a few key nerfs later on. But in general, balance is still okay, and the main issue with class design overall is that some specs simply feel outdated at this point, and might need a few more tools to truly break into the highest tiers. But we want to know what you think. What would you buff or nerf this season? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And once again, we should let you know about our rating game guarantee at skillcap.com slash wow. If you'd like to learn more about PvP, we got over 600 videos to help you out, including class courses that show you how to play your spec, and hundreds of arena commentaries where pro players break down gameplay step by step. Joining today will also give you instant access to the premium section of our Discord, where our team of expert players can answer all of your PvP questions. For now, 99 is all it takes to get access to all of our exclusive features and get the rating you've always wanted. So what are you waiting for? Check out skillcap.com slash wow. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. We hope you learned something useful. So let us know how we did by leaving a comment below. If you're interested in seeing more, be sure to subscribe to help us both out. We do more than just tier lists on this channel, and chances are we have something just for you. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.